We'll see how those keys apply, Mr. Peterson. Jason Couch starts us off. Yes. 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 All right, 10 down for him. One more, baby. Like that. Just 11 more. Come it's on. simple, good right? Time. Yeah. Time. Our what? last 300 game on TV, by the way, Jason was a good witness to that. Mika Koevunemi in Connecticut a couple years back faced <laughs> Jason in the final. Remember the big hug that Major Mika gave him? Yep. That red thing on Joe's finger helps to alleviate blisters and helps him grip the bowling ball a little bit more. Perfect shot, Joe Tricconi leading us to our Ace Hardware matchup in his final, Joe C against Jason Clark. The millionaire against the guy that just won his first match ever on television. Again, you can see the disparity in averages there. Joe Tricconi averaging a lot higher than Jason, but you know what? This match boils down to one thing and one thing only, experience in a final match. Speaking of experience, Mine goes back with Joe a long way. He used to host the Challenge and Championship Bowling Challenge, WSTM Syracuse. We had two lanes in our TV studio. Joe was our statistician while a high school student at Skinny Atlas High. Joe's like a walking almanac, isn't he? I mean, he this guy way knows back with the game. everything. He used to be our helper on those shows and has literally an extraordinary video collection of TV shows going way back to about 1980 and then told us over the summer he recently traded with a collector in New York City to get a bunch of shows from the 60s and 70s, Chris Schenkel hosting. Another guy that used to do the same thing was the late Don Johnson and my old coach, Don Johnson had a library second to none and he won 26 times. So maybe a good start for Joe Ciccone. Pin not go down. All right. Remember, Jason got some nice breaks in the first match beating Norm Duke. This isn't one of them. A little high flush, the ball goes right by the eight pin. Pin for Jason, who finished 33rd in Japan. Yeah. And Randy told us last night that he really felt his physical game was struggling, although he worked hard all summer. Coming out of his swing, almost like a golfer coming out of his shoes, rising up too soon before striking the ball. Yeah, just coming up out of it a little bit, and, and that got the, uh, the ball to kind of spray on the lane. Perfect ball there, so getting back to that point, Randy, has he made the adjustment properly? Keep fighting. Well, again, you know, he's got to stay in control. Don't get too fast and just focus on staying down and staying with it. He did it perfect on that shot. In fact, I really haven't seen him make a bad shot except for the, the one shot he went high in the first match. And the only reason why he did that was because he kind of turned it early. Coney, four-time All-American in college, two years Erie Community College in Buffalo, and then Arizona State for two years. Uh-oh, that's way high through the nose. And leaves the 6'10". That was like the clean and jerk move there. That, that's where you kind of grab it and give it a little extra at the bottom of the swing to help it turn the corner a little bit. Only problem was, when you jerk up on it like this, it always causes the ball to hook a little bit sooner. And he's lucky to only leave the 6'10". Takes care of it. Joe, the first male to be named the Intercollegiate Bowler of the Year twice. 94 at Erie CC and the 97 eighth strike at Arizona State. We saw Robbie Spigner, the commissioner's exemption choice this week. Four-time All-American at Indiana. Joe's success in college. A lot of great college bowlers have come on tour. How much has the college game helped those guys? Well, it's helped them a lot, and it's you know primarily because of experience. Going to different countries, going to different venues, bowling on different conditions. I never had that when I was growing up, Dad. He's swinging out, no doubt about it. All 10 down, late help on number 10 for Joe Ciccone. Hey, no swag. No pun intended. <laughs> Is that a good start? He's struck in three of the first four frames. Has an eight pin lead on Jason Couch. Joe C goes to the towel. The other JC in this match, Couch getting ready. H&R Block. Holman, Wayne Webb have won multiple titles here, along with Don Johnson and Brian Himmler, who is the defending champ, but of course a new champion here. Maybe Jason Couch one day is a Hall of Famer. 
11 tour titles. Joe Giacconi going for his first ever close match. Fourth frame for Couch, looks for the double. Just go up two. Look out. Disastrous split. Well, I, I don't know what happened. Only Jason Couch knows what happened. I mean, I would think that it was a little bit left of target and a little fast, and that caused the ball to push just a little bit too long. Jason leaves a 3.79. Tough split. Won't convert seven stands. Open frame for Jason Couch. <clears throat> and Joe Ciccone, who's been so solid, sees that lead balloon to 20 pins. And he's working on a strike. Mike Devaney is now the man who could be out. It's return of champions on the bubble. Six bit. Come on. Zippel, to me, looked like he just rolled it better than the shot before it. Watch the rotation on this shot right here. Hmm. To me, it just looks like this one's rolling, so it's going to dig in. Of course, it digs in just a little bit too much, leaving a six spin, but much better than leaving a 3 7 9. That TOC list goes all the way back to the 03 04 season. Mike Devaney won in Tacoma that year. Brian Goebel's right behind him, 27 slot. I'll tell you what, Gabe, single pin. Gabe, you know, when I watch Jason Couch bowl, it, it, it's just amazing how many revolutions and how much stuff he puts on a bowling ball. Yet when you ask him, you know, Jay, what, what do you feel at point of release on your fingers? He says nothing. You know, I'm, I'm kind of old school, man. I was always, you know, you had to feel some, some weight or some pressure in your fingers. And the new school today, you don't feel anything at the point of release off your fingers. Jason Couch just amazing, amazing release. Chance for a 30 pin lead, gets it. A double, fourth and fifth frame for Joe Ciccone. And now the turkey, the lead can go up to 40. And right now, I'm going to leave the booth and go get Joe some coffee to go with a sweet roll. Check this ball out. That's perfect. Can I have a sweet roll, too? Well, Dave, I've seen you bowl. <laughs> <laughs> No sweetness in that roll. Uh, there's absolutely zero. I will take the coffee, though. Zero sweetness. Two sugars. OK, you got it. OK. <laughs> Look out, PBA. Joe Ciccone is up 40 pins now on Jason Couch with a turkey in frames four through six. Watch this follow through, how nice and long and clean it is. You could tell that was gonna be 10 back as soon as it left his hand. See those eyes get really big as soon as he lets it go? That's when the player knows it's perfect. Ten down for the lefty from Claremont, Florida. 14th year on the PBA Tour. And a huge hole now, though. Open frame in the fourth. Could spell demise for Couch in this one. Lane breakdown, Randy. Likes the left lane. I think this is his best lane, to be honest with you. Look. Yes! Not going anywhere. That's a bad man right there, Dave. You ever see Jason Couch fighting a bear? You better jump in and help the bear. He ain't going anywhere. He knows that if he starts putting some strikes on the board and strings them together, he'll put pressure back on Joe Ciccone. A stuffed bear, a teddy bear? <laughs> no, no, man, I'm talking real bear. Lane comparison for Joe. Lee can go back up to 40. Looks for the four bagger. Seventh frame. <laughs> Ty almost had the big four. Looked like it might be a split instead, just the 6-10. Near disaster. It's amazing what, what, kind of, what it does when you put a little double on your opponent before, huh? to let him know you're back in the match. 
Joe doesn't get through this one quite as well. Gets it inside. He knows it the whole way. Now right there, he's just hoping it doesn't split. Take care of that 6'10". We asked Joe.